Continuing my What's on My iPad series, I wanna talk about entertainment apps and games that are on my iPad. This video is sponsored by Ondar, let's get into it. Ice Cubes is the app I am currently using for Mastodon. I really like the design and feature set of this app. It also has a really good native vision OS app, but today we're specifically talking about the iPad. I really like Mastodon as a service. I've been having a lot of fun with it, but I love the core idea of it, that it's decentralized, that it's a bunch of different servers and instances coming together. It's not one company ruling everything. Now, Ice Cubes itself is just a Mastodon client. It acts as the front end for the service, and it's extremely customizable. From the theme, which I customized to match my uh, Obsidian and Drafts theme, I love this. I wish more apps would give you the ability to customize the theme of the app. It just lets me use the colors I want to use, make the dark mode that I like, and kind of makes things a bit more cohesive on my device. Now, there's also a side panel, so you can set this up so you can have your notification stream right next to your timeline. You can also change this to other tabs, but I personally really like having notifications next to me. One thing Ice Cubes does that not a lot of other Mastodon apps let you do is give you the ability to follow other servers. For example, there is a Mastodon server built entirely around indie apps and their updates and new releases and things like that. It's a server I would like to follow because I talk about a lot of apps. So what this means is in Ice Cubes, I can specifically follow that server. This means I can see all the updates and all the information that's being posted by these apps without having to manually follow every single one of these accounts. And that way, when new apps get added to that server, I wouldn't have to go back and manually add those as well. Ice Cubes has some of the coolest app icons I have ever seen. You definitely have to check these out at, at the very least. My only issue with Ice Cubes is according to its App Store page, there should be timeline syncing, but I haven't been able to get that to work between my iPhone, iPad, and Vision Pro. And if there's one thing that's going to cause me to go back to Ivory, it's this. I need to figure out why this isn't working. Threads is another microblogging service I've been using a lot, but Threads doesn't have a native iPad app. Now, if you're using Stage Manager, you could just download the iPhone app and it just acts as another window. It's just a skinny, tall window. It works okay, but I did find some bugs that the uh, the view of Threads, the content in it could get all thrown off. It, it, it's it's really weird bug. Not sure what causes it, but it was very frustrating to deal with. So what I did was make a progressive web app out of this. How you do this is load up the Threads web page in Safari, then go through the share sheet and pick add to home screen. This will create what's called a PWA app or a progressive web app. This gives it access to memory, local storage, and even notifications if it wanted it. This way the app will remember your position and what tab you have open. It will also act as another app so you can open it from Spotlight if you wish. Overall, Threads has been a fun service to be a part of, uh, but Threads is working on joining the Fediverse, which is all part of the Macedon decentralization. So what should happen eventually is I should be able to follow all those Threads accounts that I'm following on Threads from my Macedon account. So I should only have to use one account going forward once they implement that. SQL is my media tracking app that I've been using. You can use this to track movies, TV shows, games, books, and audiobooks. But I mostly just use this for movies and TV shows. For movies, there is an upcoming and release section. This way you can add movies you're excited to see. For upcoming movies, it will show the release date. And for movies that are already out that you want to watch but haven't seen yet, they get added to the release section. So this way you can see what's out and what's coming out. The TV show section is very similar to movies. There's also a watch next section for episodes of a show that are out now. So this way it kind of gets broken up into seasons, episodes, and what's coming out. When new content is released, you can set up SQL to send you a notification so you never miss anything. SQL also has a great widget for showing you shows and other content that is about to be released. The TV app is really important to entertainment. The way it hooks into other streaming apps like Hulu, HBO Max, Paramount, basically anything but Netflix. This is the default view for my Apple TV. I love the up next feature, and this is the first place I look when I wanna sit down and watch something and just like, hey, what's come out? I use my iPad as a portable TV when I wanna watch something in bed or when I'm traveling. And just like when I use my Apple TV, the place I start is the up next queue in the app. This app is also the host to all the movies and TV shows you buy through Apple, and this is the default way I get movies now. 
The TV app also has a really great widget for showing the up next queue. You can just select something and it'll start playing. This video is sponsored by Ondar. Ondar is a premium accessory and case maker. They have a ton of different products ranging from wallets to iPhone cases to Apple Watch straps. They have different style bags as well, ranging from backpacks to slings to fanny packs. They also have a ton of different accessories like cable ties and a very stylish dog collar for all the good dogs out there, plus AirTag holders. They sent me a couple of accessories to try out. First is the Pilot Wallet. This is a card style wallet. In the main compartment, it can hold up to six cards. On the bottom, there is a release to pop all the cards out. It can also hold a couple of cards in the front as well for quick access. And on the back, you can put a few bills. Then there is their leather Apple Watch band. I was really impressed with the leather quality of both of these products. They are very nice, and the watch band feels really good to wear and looks good with both the Ultra and regular Apple Watch. With Apple not making leather accessories anymore, Ondar is a great place to look for those products. I'm gonna put some links in the description below to where you can go check out their products. And if you use my code LOLLY, you'll get 15% off your order. My thanks to Ondar for sponsoring this video. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the different streaming services and apps that I use, cause there's really isn't anything that special here except for one, and there's one I really wanna mention, and that is F1 TV. Now, I got into Formula One a few years ago, and I kinda looked around for the best way to stream Formula One. Uh, I did it through ESPN for the first season that I was into it, but I really wanted a way to be able to watch all the qualifyings and sprints, and of course the Grand Prix and stuff like that. And I found Formula One TV, and it is great. Now, there is a big asterisk on Formula One TV and who can access it. Certain countries that have sold the streaming rights to other services and channels and things like that don't get access to F1 TV. I know for a fact the UK doesn't get it, which is a bummer. Uh, but if you're in America or the countries that do get it, it's a great service to check out if you're into Formula One. But due to rights issues, it's just not available everywhere. I know, lawyers. Ugh. But this is how I've been watching all the Formula One races for years now, and one of my favorite things about it, especially now that the iPad has external monitor support, is that I will just put a race or qualifying or something up on my iPad screen, and then I'll sit down at the external monitor and keep doing work if I have a really busy weekend. IMDB has been the go-to place for a lot of people to get information about movies, directors, actors, writers, whatever. But over the last few years, the service itself has really gone downhill. It's not what it used to be, and the website looks like it's still from 2008. The app call sheet has filled the place of IMDB for me. In here, I can look up information about a movie, a director's filmography, what actor was cast in a certain role, and more. Call sheet also covers TV shows as well. What makes Call Sheet so nice is its detailed touches. For example, if you tap on the runtime, you can see when the movie would end if you started it now. It also has the ability to hide potential spoiler information, links to specific details about movies and TV shows on the IMDb page, where to watch info when it comes to streaming services, and much more. Overcast has been my podcast streaming app of choice. In fact, it was one of the very first apps I ever covered on this channel in an, a traditional old school app walkthrough that I used to do. Now, I don't have nearly as much time to listen to podcasts as I used to. I used to have a job that had me driving all over a big area, which was great for listening to podcasts. So it's kind of a bummer I don't have that time anymore. But with Overcast though, I can use its smart speed feature. This speeds up the empty spots of a podcast. So it kind of, you know, cuts out all this cruft. In fact, smart speed has saved me over 479 hours of podcast listening time. I also combine this with the feature to listen to a podcast at 1.25x speed. I just don't have time to listen to podcasts at 1x anymore, which is a bummer, but this really helps me stay up to date on the shows I enjoy. Overcast also has support for playlists. Now, I use this to automatically build out a queuing feed for me. 
In the playlist settings, you can prioritize certain podcast shows over another, so that way they're always on top. So for example, I prioritize tech and news shows, the ones that are a bit more timely, so that way I listen to those first. I also set up a shortcut that just takes whatever my current podcast is and plays it to all of my home pods in the house. I've been using Overcast for years now and it just gets the job done for me. I'm happy with it. I've been getting back into reading a lot of comic books lately and I just kind of forgot how much fun reading comic books can be. I signed up for the Marvel Unlimited service and this has been great for that. This has all the Marvel comic books going back to the first issues of Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, and anything else you can think of. I've also been reading all the new Star Wars comics as well. The Darth Vader series is really, really good. And I've also just started the new High Republic series as well. The 12.9 inch iPad Pro is the perfect comic reading tool because you can have the full size comic page on your device. But if you have a smaller iPad, you can turn on the smart panel feature so it breaks everything up into smaller bits. This is what I use when I'm reading on my iPad mini. I've been enjoying getting back into some comics. I've read Spider-Man and X-Men when I was a kid, but having access to everything now is just awesome. Game Track is kind of like SQL, but specifically for tracking video games. There are a few different ways I use this app. First, I use the wishlist feature to track the games that are coming out. Game Tracks has a notification feature that'll let you know when a game that is on your wishlist comes out. This is perfect for me because a, a lot of times I see a game, I get excited to play, but but it you know doesn't come out for like six months or it gets delayed or something like that. And with this, I won't forget about that game when it ends up coming out. Second, I've been using this to track my backlog of games I want to play or replay. There are so many great games out there, but I just don't have enough time to play them all. Third, I've been going back through my video game library and marking games as completed or abandoned, basically building my own personal wiki of games I've played. Now, this is an absolute work in progress. I've played a lot of games over the years, so it's just going to take me a little bit of time to build this out. GameTrack is a great app and it recently got updated with support for hooking into Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam accounts. I can see all the games I've played and their achievement progress. This has been really helpful in building my uh, wiki library. But that's not all you can do with this. If you have Xbox Cloud Gaming or GeForce Now, you can actually stream games right from inside this app. This is really cool. If you're somebody that struggles with keeping track of your game library or wish list, check out Game Track. Now, speaking of playing games, the iPad is great for that, especially the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the micro LED display. Most of the games I play on my iPad are from Xbox Cloud Streaming. This is a part of their Game Pass service. I paired an Xbox controller with my iPad and away I went. You have to go through Safari to the game streaming website and add this as a web app to the home screen. This creates a PWA and it grants certain rights to it that normal websites don't have. Now, it's not amazing quality, but I can consistently get a 1080p stream at 60 frames per second if I have a decent internet connection. I usually only do this when I'm traveling or at my girlfriend's. When I'm home, I'll just play games on the actual hardware so I can get the highest quality experience. But what's great about this is all I need is a controller and internet. I don't have to worry about extra hardware or if my network or Xbox settings are right for remote play. I've been going back and playing Skyrim lately for fun. It's not a modern game by any means, so the quality and resolution loss really isn't that big of a deal. It's just fun to play while I have time. Natively, the iPad does have some of my all-time favorite games just that you can go to the App Store and download, like Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2. If you're a Star Wars fan and you've never played these games, you need to go check them out. Divinity Original Sin 2 is an amazing RPG. It's kind of like Baldur's Gate 3 if you played that recently. It's sort of like that. And Stardew Valley, which is a really fun, sort of like Animal Crossing-like kind of game that is just really fun to play. And like, it doesn't require uh, a ton of experience or knowledge or, uh, you know, ability to play Call of Duty-like games. There's also a few other native games that I've been having a lot of fun with, like Slay the Spire. It's a bit of a card strategy game mixed with a turn-based combat system. It's really fun and it does require you to like think about your moves ahead of time. It's I, I enjoy it a lot. 
And then the other game that I've been playing recently is Dead Cells. This is a roguelike game where you're going to die a lot, but it's kind of fun because it's built into the story and you learn from those experiences. So I, I actually really enjoy that. So that's it. Those are my entertainment and games. I want to hear from you all. What are your favorite entertainment apps or games on your iPad? My thanks to Ondar for sponsoring this video. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.